What's important in this training is to, to keep it in your own experience and to see what's going on right now. Um, it's very easy to live in a world of fictitious descriptions. So a set of descriptions that we've learned and that we've then reinforced by telling ourselves about who we are, about what's going on, about what all of our experience means, where our thoughts come from, you know, why we're feeling this particular emotion, and to spend basically the whole of our lives in this, um, in this fog of descriptions. And we have been told, and we seem to have then told ourselves, that the more we describe things, that somehow we're going to clear this fog by describing more and more and more, by trying to accumulate more ideas, have more experiences, and we think that somehow by increasing the amount of information that we have that we're going to get this, this overview on what's going on. And um, I know that was certainly my approach. And um, so that, that led to me living life based on analysing and working out all of my experience with reference to all of these different things that I'd learned, and all of these different ideas, these belief systems and frames of reference. And um, I felt kind of confused most of the time. I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing with this, this, this gift of life. And I knew it was a gift, and I knew it was important, and I knew I had this potential to be something far, far more incredible than I was being. But I just never seemed to be able to get to a point where I was able to express that. And um, that became quite frustrating because I knew it was there. I knew that there was something that I was missing, if you like. And um, so I tried to learn even more. I tried to read more books. I tried to have even more amazing experiences. I tried then to look into the world of spirituality and religion and seeking answers in all kinds of places and um, it didn't actually help, it just led me to having a whole new set of descriptions by which I was then comparing my experience to this new set of descriptions. And so to be introduced to a radical new approach of just relaxing for a short moment and allowing all of this sensation, all of this experience, all of this information, all of this data, all of these points of view, just to do whatever they were doing and instead identify what was at the basis of my experience in each moment. To be introduced to this approach and then to test it out in my own life I had very radical consequences. And as this process was going on, as I was beginning to identify something in myself that was always stable, that was constant throughout my experience. It didn't mean that all of this data, all of this experience suddenly died down. In fact, it was exactly the opposite. Because as I began to allow myself to experience everything, as I began to see that all of the strategies that I'd had for managing my experience really just weren't cutting it and weren't actually of any interest anymore. So all of the ways that I'd had to numb my experience, all of the ways that I'd had to try and control the way that I was feeling. So avoiding certain people, um, avoiding certain places, um, trying to convince myself that things were going well, so when I felt miserable trying to talk myself into a positive state and things like that. I could see that ultimately none of them were really leading me to this place where I felt deeply comfortable with who I was and had this um, comfort and ease of knowing what to do and what to say in each moment. I could see that all of these things I'd tried just simply weren't delivering this result. And during this process of training up in open intelligence, sometimes the, the, the data or the experience or the emotion would just be incredibly powerful and, and completely overwhelm me. And, and anger is a perfect example. And um, you know, being on the roads, particularly in somewhere like India, where you're having these near-death experiences every few minutes and 
it's really easy to, to, to get caught up in the descriptions of what's going on. And it's even easier when we feel justified in our anger. You know, when we can come up with a good reason for why we're angry. You know, this idiot, he's almost ran me over, he's almost killed me again. You know, it was the same man yesterday, or whatever it is. And, you know, we, we then justify being caught up in this anger. But to look at the results of that, what, what does that actually deliver? And I saw in, in my own experience that, you know, I, I hated feeling like that. I really hated it. I hated being caught up in that anger. And so when that did happen, what it was actually pointing me to and pointing me to the, the recognition of, well, you know, I really do have this choice. You know, when I'd be overwhelmed by this story of this description and, and feeling lost and feeling miserable is another perfect example. You know, I'd be relying on open intelligence for a short moment and then be overwhelmed by this incredible sadness or this misery or this feeling of, you know, I don't know what to do. And just being completely overwhelmed by it, you know, totally lost and totally caught up in this description of what I was feeling. And then at some point afterwards, the, the, the recognition was dawn, would, would dawn of exactly what I'd been doing. Complete indulgence in this one description building this huge story about this one emotion or this one experience or this one thought and just building it up into this huge thing but at some point it would dawn on me that's what I'm doing hold on hold on I'm just gonna relax for a short moment here instead and it was so clear it was so powerful to see the difference in my experience when I did rely on open intelligence as opposed to being caught up in all of these descriptions it was so obvious and so clear that when I was caught up in these descriptions, it was the most powerful reminder to show me I did have this choice. And the most powerful reminder to show me, well, what happens when I do emphasize these descriptions? When I do become caught up in them, it's horrible. I feel absolutely horrible. I hate it. That's brilliant. That's fantastic to have that recognition. What more powerful motivation could you have for then training up in open intelligence? And the training up starts really simply with the introduction to open intelligence. So first of all, we have to be introduced to this about ourselves that is constant. And, and that introduction is as simple as just to stop thinking for a moment. Just to pause your train of thought and to recognize that there's something about you that's naturally present, that's aware of the next thought spontaneously arising. It's alert, it's cognizant. It's awareness, it's this ability to know. And in this short moment, you just allow yourself to notice this. You allow yourself to tap into this intelligence that is at the basis of all of your experience. Rather than being caught up in all of the descriptions. And the effect is immediate and incredibly powerful. Now for me at the beginning, these short moments, I think it would have been better to call them very short moments because these glimpses of this ease and this openness were so fleeting that I kind of wondered actually whether they were happening. But I could also see that in the midst of all of this incredibly powerful flow of data, every now and again I was touching in with this sense of complete spaciousness and ease. And it began to dawn on me that I couldn't control this flow of data. I couldn't predict how I was going to feel in any day. Some days I woke up feeling quite jolly and other days I woke up and it was just this stream of negative descriptions about me and about everything else. And nothing had changed. I was living in the same room, in the same circumstances, but the descriptions were completely unpredictable. So I could see that if I based my well-being on these descriptions, then my life would continue to feel like a roller coaster where I'd feel that the victim to whatever thoughts spontaneously happened to appear, whatever experience was the experience of that moment. And it would continue to be up and down, up and down, as the descriptions fluctuated. And I also saw that when I relaxed for these short moments, it was the same intelligence, the same cognizance that was aware of all of these descriptions, whether they were negative or positive or something in between. So it was the same intelligence that was aware of the beautiful sunset that I was watching. It was the same intelligence that was aware of the burning plastic that I was also watching. 
So on a descriptive level, these two descriptions are very different. But on a fundamental level, it's the same ability to know that is aware of all of these descriptions equally and evenly. And from this perspective, what's interesting is, is that there's this powerful discernment. So it's not about becoming bland and saying, well, it's all one, it's all even, therefore I don't have to take care of my environment. It's exactly the opposite, because from this perspective, you're able to see everything clearly. Rather than being caught up in this world of descriptions about how beautiful the sunset is and how terrible the, the, the rubbish and the environmental degradation is and blaming this person and blaming that person and being a victim to all of this data, you allow yourself to feel it all fully, the beauty of the sunset and the distress and the sadness at the destruction. And from this perspective, from this balanced view, then you can make really clear, powerful decisions then you're able to really think outside all of the conventional boxes about how things need to be done. But it's only by becoming aware of what these boxes are that you have any chance of going beyond them. Only when you become aware of the nature of all of these assumptions can you blow them all wide open into this expansive seeing. And that's what you're doing every short moment. So it might seem like a huge task at the beginning, it might seem to be so much data and so much experience. Well, how on earth am I going to deal with all of that? You know, look at all of my past history. Look at all of my memories. Look at all of the pain I felt. Look at all of the pain I've caused other people. How am I going to deal with this mountain of data? This mountain of experience and thoughts and emotions? And the key is short moments. Because you only ever experience one thing at a time. One experience followed by another, in this seamless flow, shining forth equally from open intelligence. So you don't have to deal with the whole mountain all at once. It's one datum at a time, one thought at a time, one experience at a time. And this actually means that we can approach this with, with an honesty and a humility of seeing it's just one thought at a time that I have to clarify my own experience clarify as to the nature of, well, what am I feeling right now? What's the nature of it? What really is it that I'm feeling? What really is this anger? What really is this sadness? What really is this judgment and criticism? And it's only by be becoming clear on that that we become masters of it, rather than victims to it. And for me, many times at the beginning, the short moments seemed very elusive something would happen, somebody would say something, something I didn't like, something I didn't agree with, and there would be this flush of emotion and anger, and this urge to respond, and I often found myself reacting in ways still that I really didn't like. But again, here was this opportunity, here was this reminder, do I want to carry on like this, or do I want to do everything possible to support myself in making this choice about how I use my mind? And that everything possible is the four mainstays. It's this infallible support network. It's like a safety net that it means it's impossible to fall back into these old ways of behaving. And I saw that the more I took advantage of this, the more naturally I remembered, the more effortlessly I was able to really take responsibility for all of my experience, for all of my data, all of my thoughts. And to see that I had the capacity to empower all of them with this incredible beneficial quality. And that could only come about by me taking responsibility for them one at a time, one short moment at a time, one moment at a time. And to see that the profound effect this had on my life and my relationships, my relationship with myself, my relationship with the, the people that are near and dear to me in my life, my relationship with my environment and my surroundings. It was wonderful to stop this small-scale war that had been going on within me and without me for the whole of my life, struggling with myself and my thoughts and my emotions, struggling with everybody around me, struggling with my life. Instead, this complete relaxation and potency discovered in each short moment. And the invitation here is to discover this for yourself. And if it doesn't make sense yet in your experience, just keep showing up. <coughs> and it's guaranteed that it will become your experience, absolutely guaranteed. Now that's an outrageous claim, and if you don't believe that claim, keep showing up and prove to yourself that it's not true.
give yourself that opportunity. <laughs>